What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm here with uh, Rehan Sayu. And what did you do today? Um, I somehow topped um, Toronto Regional, Scott fifth. Uh, I want to just note, uh, note that uh, he was the only X1 that came fifth. The, the only one that missed the top four. Yeah. Sorry Rehan. That's okay. But what did you play today? Um, I played something super super spicy, very unseen in the format. I played Ubel. This is like the first tier one deck I've played since February. I got I punted Niagara and I got tired of like punting with like tier two decks. Um, so I'm like, hey, I want to play a tier one deck and get carried for once. So I think you were telling me earlier, this is your first time playing Ubel? Like this ever? Is, this is like the first week I played Ubel. I had midterms all week. And so like between midterm studying, I would look at like spreadsheet combos. Shout out to Lucas Sacco. He had really good spreadsheet combos. Uh, very hard to memorize. I would like memorize one and I forget two. So, um, this is a really good deck if you can memorize combos. Unfortunately, the only combo I need is like a Lotus combo. <laughs> Just open Lotus and um, you win. Yeah, so, but like there were good combos. Um, and the deck is really powerful. I played through hand traps and eventually you get into like nice game states where you're up in card advantage that it really doesn't matter like where you went wrong in your combo. And you know, enough times you like, you pop enough U bells that you get enough bodies to do whatever you want. So there are definitely ways to be more efficient with the deck and uh, like ways that can improve. But I've tried to use this regional as like testing grounds for like future events. Um, and yeah, so that's my reason for playing the deck. Perfect. You want to get right into it? Right. So actually, one of the reasons that I forgot, um, like why I want to play this deck, is that after White Six Niagara, um, Dominus Impulse is really hyped. So that's a really that's a really big card that like can break a lot of like decks packs. So I wanted to play a deck that can minimize like the impact of Dominus Impulse. And so when you have like for example like Lotus and like you know you lead with Lotus, that minimizes like how much impact Dominus Impulse can have. Definitely, you can still use Dominus Impacts, but it's not going to be back breaking and stop your combo entirely. So that's one of the things that I want to consider going into a deck. Uh, but obviously, this deck is really important to four us. So you kind of like pick your battles. Uh, with that but just gonna speed through the combo um three lotus because like this has been around here forever uh three beckoning one this uh, i don't play the, play the brick just don't need to draw it when you do draw this and like you know have to search this it's unfortunate but like it's whatever it's you belt uh the one squirmer uh, people played like two but like i added like a 44th card i didn't want to like screw up the math a lot so i didn't want to play like 45. That is like the Ubel package. This is pretty standard. Nothing special. I'm your pain. One is fine. Uh, I sound miserable, but it's was, was actually really fun to play. So. Yeah, I was gonna say, I'm like, <laughs> you sound like you don't want to be here. No, this is actually really fun to play. <laughs> uh, so that's like the feed package. Yay, shout continue out GX. On. Continue on, it's terraforming. Um, I have a nightmare. Oh, uh, Thrones. Card's broken. Holy. This is such a nice Ash check. It's like when you try to like, check for Ash in Brandon Fusion. Yeah. It's great. Except, like, if they Ash this, like, you don't lose just because, like, you have, like, 16 other extenders. Um, three Fiendsmiths. I don't know people are playing, like, two, but, like, if you draw this card, it's so good. Just playing Wing Tech as well. I try to, like, lead with Fiendsmith stuff. I don't know if this is right. Again, this is my first week playing the deck, so maybe it's not right. But, like, this card is so good at, like, forcing stuff through. Uh, the one tracked, I mean, people like like two or three, but like I think this is fine. The card's really good. Um, yeah. So I have a question. I, I know this answer. deck. Some people have been kind of not wanting to play this deck because it loses to Fua really hard. Mm -hmm. You didn't care about that. Um, so I kind of wanted to see how bad Fua would. Oh, be. so you just just limit testing. Uh, this this was uh, like uh, a regional that's wanted to like test this deck for like future events. Um, so it wasn't awful. You really, um, you do have like some counters because, for example, like if they don't know you're playing Ubel, so game one, um, you do have opportunities to like make an early Phantom. Yeah. And that's what people do in Master Duel as well. Uh, because a lot of like the theory about like how to play against Fool Loss comes from Master Duel as well. Uh, because obviously, like they have Maxi there, right? So that's like obviously much better. Um, so people won't um, Maxi like preemptively in Master Duel because like there's Gamma in the format. So you just auto lose to, ga um, auto -lose to Gamma. And so when you have that sort of experience going for you, you can make an early phantom and that just like nullifies like Fulos. Obviously people try to like bait the phantom as well, like for example like with an Ash or like Valor and then they'll Fulos. But it kind of like mitigates like how much value they can get out of it. Mm. And it also like just uh, like, you know, a game of chicken, like, you know, will you use your phantom or not? Um, so that was like one thing going into it. And then the other thing I realized was that um, even if they do Fulos you, there are lines that you can end on like a minimalistic board where you give them like you know one or two draws but still have like some sort of interaction um and follow-up and then there are like tech cards i played to like minimize the impact of fua okay um so yeah 
and then I can just go over them uh, when we're there. Yep. So this, this, uh, car's really good. This is part of the reason, like you, like you play this because of Fua, because uh, with two draws you can end on Rage and Escape, which doesn't seem like a lot, but like it's like four interactions. So like if you're getting four interactions for two draws, it's a very favorable trade. So I think the Escape package was uh, really good. Mm -hmm. it also hel helps that uh, you know decks like um, Centurion are in the format, which like hard lose to Escape. So that was good. Okay. Um, okay, so anti Fua. Nice. Just draw it. Just draw it. I did draw it. Nice. One for one. Lose to Fua. Yes. <laughs> so there's that. Uh, tactics. Rip the Fua. Nice. Uh, I played one because um, I'm playing Thrust on the side. So I wanted to card like and just go second as well. And so I thought Thrust, um, just the one towns is fine. Like if you draw it, it's chill. Um, you can also do things where, depending on like the strength of the engine, like against Salamon Grid, I think it's like my friend Steven Santoli. Um, what I did was like, I, depending on like the strength of the engine, right? So the Salad engine isn't that great to like unchain stuff. So I did on like Rage, Escape, and Phantom. Obviously he got like four draws out of it, but then I used like the towns to like look at like, his hand. So, um, it gives you like good hand knowledge and you can still like play with Fua against like decks that have like weaker engine because yeah. they rely very much on like Don engine to keep going. Um, so there's that. And then it's a hand trap format, so three imperms. Um, actually, gonna go over these first. Um, Mourner, just because um, I think Tempai is a really scary matchup. I played one Tempai, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't think I've sweat in a while as much as I did that match. <laughs> wow. So that that game was really scary because like they have so many answers to your deck. To everything. Like, to everything, right? And like your deck plays worse into their stuff than like Snake Eye does, for example. So like if they shift you, you pass. If they pull you, you pass. If they pull you, they eventually get into Fu and then you pass. But like the point is like they have a lot of good answers. And then if you're on breakers, like your deck also does two breakers. So I wanted a card that was functional under Shifter and was good against that deck. And then the other thing I realized from testing is that Witch is um, very prominent in the format. So I needed something that can like stop Witch as well. And then going over like the other hand trap options, I thought Nib was really mid. And I didn't see Nib at all. Uh, the one time I got Nib, my opponent actually died because he, he used it too early and then I attacked with three u -bells. Oh, nice. So this is was actually really clutch as well because the issue with some, the u deck sometimes is that you, have, you lack damage output. And so some things that you can do is um, use this to like get some burn damage in, which like lowers the threshold for OTK as well. Um, and then the triple Veiler, again, just negation hand traps. Uh, and then Fua counter number three. You're just using Ash just for Fua. Not just for Fua, but like <laughs> obviously it's really good. Yeah. Like for that uh, purpose as well, right? And then the last one was uh, Droll and Lockbird. So lots of hand traps, but like the Droll inclusion was more so that you know, you can like get your search in, or you can get like your uh, your opponent like their one draw, and then you draw them, and they're not drawing. So that effectively just turns their fuwa into like, you know, a one for one. No, well, yeah. So they trades with their with your draw. So um, that was the theory behind it, and I think it was nice because a lot of these decks are still playing into draw as well. Like the Snake Eye deck, the Bell deck, um, they're all playing into draw. So I thought draw was actually pretty good, especially for game ones. Um, and then when you have like even like a half board and then draw, it's really hard to kill you. Yeah. So. That was the hand traps. And then um, shout out to Michael Walters. He kind of pulled this last minute and I bought it because it was a good price. Um, but then the other thing also in the format is that Volchami Fulos also counters Volchami Fulos, right? So when you have decks like Tempai, for example, that go like Heretic Seals, um, right? They go Tribute, no cards on the field, and they use Fulos. So if you get Fulos, you can still end on like, for example, like Phantom, and then use Phantom Effect, Spirit Effect, check for Ash, then Fua, mm -hmm. right? And so in a sense, like your Fua trades with their Fua, right? Because they also can't push it. So eventually I will get three. Yeah, just draw the one. But for now we're drawing the one. Yeah. Um, but this is also an anti Fua card because if you Fua me, I Fua you. Everyone gets Fua. Nice. Uh, we'll go over extra deck real quick. Double Phantom, don't need, I don't think I needed a third. I was looking for the third, but then Yangho fell asleep or sold his third, sorry. <laughs> So he sold his, he sold his. <laughs> the Young Ho shout outs in every video, man. In every video. Uh, so Varudras, um, staple. Um, I was thinking of playing Caesar or not. And then I realized from like the combo, the spreadsheet combos, is that sometimes you are fiend locked and so you can't make Varudras and in those instances you need to make Caesar. Mm -hmm. um, also, Supla is in the format as well sometimes. Uh, shout out to the rescue ace, Bozos. Um, <laughs> Bozo, yo. Nice, Kevin. This dude? Uh, and so you need something like to counter like that as well. So you can end on like Rage, this, and then uh, Phantom. Um, it was good. Well, I you know used it once or twice. 
Ah, oh, Fiendsmith stuff. Thanks. Uh, Fiendsmith stuff is really cool. I think it's a really cool inclusion to the game. I didn't play it at first. I thought I was really petty. So I was like, why, why do they have this? But now that I've played it, I'm like, oh, this is sick. Uh, so. <laughs> oh my yeah. god, he's playing good cards. I know. Uh, and then Double Yama, because I'm playing the Escape. Even if I wasn't playing Escape, I'd play Double Yama. Uh, Anguish. This is uh, from the people's side, but like I really like this in the main. I also don't know what I'd play as like instead of it. Instead of it. Yeah. Um, the other uh, the other considerations were were uh, third um, Phantom, uh, but also there was a consideration to play um, like Gustav Max, and then the last consideration was was a Link Five, um, the Underworld Goddess. Oh yeah. Um, because uh, a lot of people don't know, but like the Moon Goddess has like a effect where like the monster points to, you can use that as Link material as well. So you can just like Link away two of your points monsters, um, which actually comes up because in the format, if you have like Light Dark Chaos Angel with Centurion, um, it comes up yeah, where that's how it. you out it. Yeah. Uh, so that was a card that I considered, but I just kind of like the Unchained cards a lot, and they're really good. And then the Muckcracker for combos, and then the ESP to banish your life. Yep. Um, and the side deck, I thought the side deck was cool. There's nothing sexy. Ferulia. Nice. To draw into my Fuelos. Nice. Um, and then I played more anti Fuelos cards, the so Thrust. Again, I always want to skip your turn if you're skipping my turn. Played DDG, played um, Barrier. Um, the other considerations I had were instead of playing Thrust, just because they can lose an Ash as well, and then sometimes like these aren't always guaranteed to like line up correctly into the matchup. Um, I was playing Triple Strike, and so the theory was was that sometimes um, like Tenpai can uh, kill you through D Barrier, or they have like Cross it or something, um, and then Strike always trades with their starter, right? And you can hold it, um, and it combines well with your non engine. Um, and then testing Strike was really good, but uh, I just needed like some other cards in this deck. And so I was like, I don't want to play one strike, I so I just cut the strikes. Yep. Um, but the strikes were in tandem with the thrust package. Oh, okay, okay. Um, and so the other cards, because I uh, accidentally hyped up Centurion, so Cosmic. <laughs> accidentally hyped up Centurion. Yeah, Centurion was cool, I played Centurion for the YCS, I built that deck with Pack and Centoli. Um, so Pack went 10-0, and then I was like, oh, I need to play Cosmic now, so. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, rivalry, because Snake, Centurion in the format. Um, I just thought this was a cool card. So, it's not because it's a cool card. It's a pretty cool card. No, it's not because it's uh, Last card is Metal Tronus. Uh, this is shout out to Thomas for suggesting it, and then Kevin for lending me them. Um, so, big shout out Kevin. Kevin. Kevin got hit by this card, unfortunately. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Sad. So, um, Metal Tronus is really cool. Um, because uh, against like Crimson Dragon, you can let them like um, sick or whatever, and then use Metal Tronus on this Crimson Dragon as some an effect veiler, which lets you get more bodies and just completely halt their pushes. Um, it's also really good into like the mirror match. You can negate Caesar with it, summon Desiree, which applies, applies a lot of pressure. Uh, so overall, I thought it was really good. It also turns into like pseudo engine sometimes, um, which makes this card like be really cool in like utility instances as well. So yeah, that was my deck profile. Um, this had like, I don't know, this, this deck carries, man. Congratulations on your fifth place. Thank Unfortunately, you. you couldn't make it top four, but yeah. I believe in you. Maybe next time. We'll get there. Uh, you want to give any shout outs before we finish off today? Uh, yeah, shout outs to Councilor Rubina. Shout outs to Lucas Saka for Spreadsheet. Uh, shout out to Joey for the sleeves. Uh, shout out to Matt for like hunting me cards. Shout out to Kevin for lending me cards. Shout out to Youngo for not <laughs> lending me cards. <laughs> <laughs> the whole uh, gang's getting flamed right now, bro. Uh, but yeah, I'm pretty sure if I miss anyone, I'm sorry. Like, oh, and then shout out to my fiance, Sharon. Jeez, shout out to fiance. Crazy. That's last crazy. <laughs> no, hey, best for us. Best for us. Best for us. Best for us. So thank you guys all for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you guys enjoyed it. With that, thank you. Sign it out. Peace.